Hello everybody and welcome back, it is good to talk to all of you again today, and today I'm doing a ship review for the premium tier 6 German destroyer, the T-61. So first things first, let's take a look at how she is in port, and then I'll show you some battle footage. Starting off with survivability, and the T-61's base HP is 14,700. If you take survivability expert, you can get that up to 16,800. This is the third highest HP amongst tier 6 destroyers, Eigel having the most at 17,000, and the other German destroyer, the Gaide, at 16,500 base is the next highest. So T61 is third at 14,700. That's a you know, pretty good amount of HP for a destroyer, but not top of the tier. Moving on. Let's look at the artillery. In terms of number of guns, there's four of them, 128 millimeters. Four is a very sort of standard number among tier six destroyers. The vast majority of them have four guns. Um, if you look at the Russian destroyers, the Pan-Asian destroyers, the British destroyer, um, all four guns. So a very, very standard number. Now, in terms of reload speed, the T-61's base reload speed is four seconds, and that is the fastest in the tier. The four second reload time is comparable to what you have on the Monaghan and the Farragut. So that is really good. Um, the next fastest reloading time is the Eigel at 4.8, and then that's followed by the Russian destroyers at 5 seconds base. If you take, of course, basic firing training and you take Adrenaline Rush, you can get that number down even more. So for me, I'm taking BFT. So I've got the number down to 3.6, and then factor in Adrenaline Rush, and it can go lower. Traverse speed for the turrets uh, is a pretty darn good 22.5 seconds. And, you know, that's not the fastest in the tier, the fastest being obviously the uh, US destroyers, followed by the Gallant, and then the Nyevny, but, you know, 22.5 is not bad, 8 degree per second traverse speed is, yeah, it's okay. Now, high explosive DPM, and being a German destroyer, her HE isn't really all that strong. Maximum HE shell damage is 1500. Now having that rate of fire does help. So her HE DPM is about 90,000, um, but that is quite a bit lower than the Farragut B hull's 135,000, and still lower than Monaghan A hull and Farragut C hull, which are at 108,000. Also lower than Igo, which is at 125,000. However, I do have to say something about the guns. The guns do have some pretty good arcs, so you can actually get all four of your guns out having the ship at about a 31 degree angle. So that's actually really, really good. Three of the guns, you can get it out at a pretty nice, like I think it was like 18 or 19 degree angle. So gun angles are really, really good. Now, going back to the HG shells again, the T61 has, you know, reasonable velocity HG shells, 830 meters per second. Standard air drag 0 0.34 and a 28 kilogram shell weight. Now, all these factors, sort of numbers, whatever you want to call it, put together means that the T61 is going to have good sort of short, medium range arcs and shell travel times. However, if you're talking about longer range, the shells are going to become a little bit floaty. For the shells to not be really sort of floaty at the longer distances, you really need to look at, let's say, the Pan-Asian or the Russian destroyers, where they have really high muzzle velocity, 870 meters per second. They have really low air drag values at 0 0.29, and they have heavier shells at 33.4 kilograms. That means those shells are going to bleed less energy downrange. They're going to keep those flatter arcs, and that's why the Pan-Asian and the Russian destroyers they are the gunboats, right? They're gunboats for a reason. But these guns are definitely going to be usable. And if you want to sort of compare and contrast them to guns that are more difficult to use, take a look at the USN destroyer guns, right? The 127mm USN guns have worse velocity, 830 for the German one, 792 for the American guns, 0.34 air drag for the German T61, 0.35 for the American destroyers, and the German destroyer has heavier shells, 28 kilograms versus 24.5. So the T61 in terms of gun performance, it's going to be sort of in between the floaty American rainbow arcs and the flatter Pan-Asian Russian ones, right? It's Although because its numbers are closer to the US ones, you can expect the performance to be a little bit more like the USM ones than the uh, uh, Russian Pan-Asian destroyers. Okay. 
Moving on away from HE and let's take a look at the AP and the AP is one hell of an interesting thing because first of all the AP shell damage is really high at 3000. That combined with that really fast reload time, best in class remember, that makes for a very interesting destroyer. If you get enemy ships that go broadside you can hammer them for a lot of damage very very quickly. T61 has the highest AP DPM among tier 6 destroyers in the game at 180,000 maximum theoretical DPS. That is a lot of AP damage that you can get really, really quickly, and I'll show you in the gameplay example what I'm talking about. All in all, just if you get a broadside target and you're closer ish, right, at sort of close mid range, or whatever, go to your AP. You can get a lot of damage really, really quickly. Okay, so moving away from the guns, oh, and by the way, the AP velocity and air drag and everything is the same as the HE, so the shell performance in terms of the flight times and everything is going to be really, really consistent. And like I said, you know, the primary time you want to be using the AP is broadside target and closer distances, right? Okay, moving away from the guns, let's take a look at the torpedoes. And once again, the T-61 is interesting in this regard. German torpedoes are not really renowned for their high damage or anything like that. You've got quadruple launchers, so eight torpedoes in the water at any one time. Your maximum torpedo alpha strike is 109,600 damage. This is quite a bit lower than Monaghan B-Hull, which can top out 166,330 alpha damage. Um, it's below Fubuki, which is at 146,403, and below Shinonome, which is 131,400. But 109,600 is not... Uh, it's not really terrible. There are ships that can you know, do worse in terms of the alpha strike. However, however, T61 is the third best in tier for torpedo DPM. And this is a big result of its reload time. It has the fastest reload of any tier 6 destroyer in the game. You get a reload time of 68 seconds. And if you have the torpedo armament expertise, you can get it down to 61.2. And that means you can spam a lot of torpedoes. And so if you combine the characteristics for the guns, characteristic for the torpedoes, the T-61 is a pretty good hybrid destroyer. It can do bits of everything. It can do bits of everything pretty reasonably too. As for the torpedoes themselves, in terms of torpedo speed, 65 knots for the torpedoes. Um, and that is the second best in tier. The only torpedoes that go faster are Nyevni torpedoes, which go 70, but Nyevni torpedoes have well, basically no range. So in terms of usable range torpedoes, the T-61 actually has the fastest torpedoes, which are really, really nice. Torp detect 1.3 kilometers, um, and that gives a reaction time of 7.4 seconds. 7.4 second reaction time is best in tier, unless you want to consider the deep water torpedoes on the Fushun. But those are deep water torpedoes, and it's a bit of an asterisk when dealing with deep water torps because it's not really a fair comparison to compare normal to deep water torpedoes. Amongst the normal torpedoes um, on tier 6 destroyers, the T61 has best react time, has the third best torp detect, and the best speed. So, all in all, really, really good. In terms of torpedo range, 8 kilometer range is really pretty usable. I mean, yes, there's some that are better, 10 kilometer for the Japanese torpedo boats and 9.2 for the B Hall Monahan, but I mean, 8 kilometer torps very 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 good utility. Um and again, coupled with that speed and that nice sort of reaction time, T61, oh yeah, and of course the reload time, you can become a very effective torpedo boat using the T61. Moving on, um AA, uh negligible. Sure, they'll occasionally shoot down some planes, but Okay, we're, we're not, not really going to talk about DDA, it's just not really all that amazing. <laughs> Alright, so let's talk about the maneuverability. Maximum speed, if you factor in everything, you can go quite fast, um, but in terms of base speed, 35 knots. And T61, it's a little bit let down here uh, by its speed. At 35 knots base, it is the slowest tier 6 destroyer in the game. Um, yes, with speed boost and everything, you can get it up to close to 40 knots, but there are other destroyers in the game that are going to be outrunning you. That's for sure. 
Turning circle radius 600 meters is, well, it's okay. There are destroyers that are definitely going to be more agile. Gallant is an amazing 540. The U.S. destroyer is at 560. Hatsuharu is at like 580, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, 600, not bad. I mean, compared to the Gade, um, which is at like 690, 600 is pretty reasonable. Finally, in terms of rudder shift time, stock rudder shift time, 3.6 seconds, not the best in class at all. Those titles would go to the Japanese and American destroyers. But, you know, if you throw on a rudder shift mod, 2.9 seconds is okay. But the slower speed of the ship does make her feel occasionally sluggish in battle, and you will feel it. Finally, concealment. The T-61 is actually reasonably stealthy for a destroyer. Its surface attack is 6.13. Now, 6.1 in game display, but 6.13 is the actual number. That makes it sort of the third best in the tier, and it's tied with ships like the Shinonome, tied with the Fushun, the Nyevni. Now, there are ships that are going to be stealthier than you. The Gallant is going to be stealthier, the Hatsuharu is going to be stealthier, but not many other ships at tier 6 for destroyers is going to be stealthier than you. So when you're dealing with other tier 6 opposition, you have a pretty good chance to win most of your destroyer fights. However, of course, we don't just play in tier 6 only games. You're going to run into tier 7 and tier 8 destroyers. And of course, there are some ships there that are going to be a real danger to you. But that'll be true for other tier 6 destroyers as well. So that's why I'm only making comparisons between this T-61 and the other tier 6 destroyers. Okay, final things that are sort of special about the T-61. She does have access to a hydroacoustic search. So in conditions where the enemy destroyer has smoked up and is maybe firing from smoke, you can use this hydroacoustic to hunt them down. Of course, this is a reasonably short duration hydroacoustic, lasting only 92 seconds, um, but definitely a usable thing. It can also be used as a defensive hydroacoustic for yourself. If you've popped smoke and then you want to sort of sit in your smoke and shoot out of it, you can use the hydroacoustic to help spot enemy torpedoes. In terms of your captain skills, I have pretty much gone with this kind of build right now. I've gone with priority target. I've gone with last stand, adrenaline rush gone with basic firing training, gone with concealment expert, survivability expert, and torpedo armament expertise. Now, of course, you can tailor your builds to how you like them, but, you know, this is how I like my ship, and she's worked for me pretty well, as I will show you in uh, the battle footage. All right, so let's go take a look at that battle footage, and I'll give you more of my thoughts there. So here we are on fault line, and I spawned middle with my division mate, who is in a Queen Elizabeth. And I'm like, okay, let's take a look at the enemy team. Minsk, Mahan, Farragut, Mutsuki. Okay, not too many ships there I have to worry about. I pretty much outspot all of them. So, you know, and a Mutsuki, well, it can't win in a gunfight against me. So, pretty confident. So I'm going to make a beeline for the A-cap right now. And I want to go to the A-cap. Primarily because, one, I have a little bit of backup there, and two, I really don't want to go into the open B-cap area by myself, especially when there are two CVs on the enemy team. Two CV games are not really very agreeable with destroyers, shall we say? So I want to go to A, where I can lend a bit of support for all Nicholas. The Nicholas can maybe support me a little bit. Same with that Dallas over there. And I'll hear you maybe get some plane spotting there as well. There's also one other destroyer. I'm not sure if he's going to come join us. Maybe... So if there is, you know, we'll have three destroyers there. Now, enemy team, they get spotted by aircraft, and this is why I kind of want to go here, because there's likely to be some air spotting for me. And I know that there's two DDs incoming, and those two DDs I'm not too worried about. Combination of smoke, hydro, and my guns with their DPM should be able to handle these two destroyers no problem, especially since I do also have some backup. Now, I am approaching from an area where they can't see, as you can tell, the enemy team does not have aircraft near this cap area at all, which means I am likely to get the drop on this enemy ship. Now, this Mitsuki, <laughs> I'm not sure if he's just feeling brave or not. Um, he's just, yeah, in a position where he's going to die because I'm going to get the jump on him right about here. Hold on a second here. There you go. I'm popping my smoke a little bit. 
And there's my Hydro on. Now, with my Hydro on, that Mutsuki can no longer get away from me. Can't hide in smoke or anything like that. It's going to get spotted. It's having a bad day. Now, doesn't have any camo, so I am guessing maybe he's just new and doesn't really know what he's doing, but... Mutsuki isn't long for this world. A couple of good hits in there, and Mutsuki goes down. Alright, now the Mahan. Mahan and Mihan. Okay, I mean, he's in a really bad spot here. A uh, lot of ships focusing him down. I obviously immediately go out, go aggressive. That allows me to keep him on my Hydro, so he can't disappear in smoke or anything like that. Can't be cute with me. Nope, and he's going to go down in a second here, and... Oh, and... Okay. There you go. Cruiser gets the kill. Alright, so first action of this game. Two enemy destroyers down. No losses for our team. Advantage us, because we're going to be able to take this A cap very, very freely. Nobody's really going to be able to come here and contest us. Enemy battleship. This Engine poor Koenig. Oh, I, I, I'm not sure if he's aware of what's over here, but... Yeah, he's... I, don't, I think right now he's confused. Because <laughs> you can see him. He's like, do I go north? Do I turn around? Do I go south? He's eventually going to make the worst choice of all. Because he's going to go... Yeah, you guessed it. He's going to try to come through that gap between those two islands. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh. He's coming. He's coming. I got to get over there and get some torpedoes. <laughs> I got excited here. Because it's a, it's a very good area for destroyers. You know, ships coming around the area. They're not going to see anything. And it's like, surprise, torpedoes! That's one of the things that you want to do as a destroyer, is to have those torpedoes in that area, ready for ships that come around. But there's a lot of DDs here. Remember, it's not just me. There's me, the Mahan. There is... I think Nicholas is still here as well. Yeah, the Mahan's launching torpedoes right now. It's going to be a bit of a welcoming party. A torpedo welcoming party for this Koenig. So really, I'm hoping this Koenig is not going to decide to come out here, because... Yeah, it's not going to be much fun for him. You know, we have a CV here as well, so there's torpedo bombers in addition to all the DD torpedoes. All right, let's see how brave this guy is. Pop my torpedoes off, turn around. Yes, just timed it perfectly. It was all planned. <laughs> uh, our CV is dropping torpedoes now. This Koenig has a wall of stuff heading for him. By the way, you just gotta see, this This Koenig has, like, just, has some luck. Because <laughs> I thought he was supposed to be dead. Look back and I'm like, wait, what? No, he's still got a thousand HP? What? <laughs> I get 700 more damage and our dive bomber does finish him off, but... Did manage to uh, survive all those torpedoes. The airdropped ones, the Mahan's torpedoes, like, survived all of those. Only to get killed off by some airplane dive bombers and a little bit of DDHE. So, works for me. Alright, so with that handled, enemy team is, well, they folded on this flank pretty much completely. The only ship remaining here is a Nuremberg, but a Nuremberg is being shot at by my division mate, the Queen Elizabeth, and he is not long for this world at all. And once the Nuremberg goes down, well, I hope the enemy team CVs have noticed that there is a push coming down on the side and turn around and start running the opposite direction as quick. Well, no. <laughs> nope. Look at where that ranger is. Good lord. Ranger, you are in the wrong place. And, you know, by the way, when you're talking about two CV games, if your CVs are terrible, the chances of you winning two CV games actually becomes quite low just because... CVs have a really big impact, at least in terms of like spotting and giving vision and things like that. You know, if you have a good CV player that constantly like keeps things spotted, it makes life easier for your team, right? If like enemy ships can't get off of detect, it's a really big advantage for your team. And while well, this poor ranger just oops. Anyways, like I said earlier, if you have broadside target, go to armor piercing. Your AP actually does really, really good damage. And as you can see, I am taking uh, the Ranger's HP away very, very quickly. Um, got a couple of good Citadels there. Should have aimed a little bit further back, but there we go. Get the Ranger, and oh look, the Ryujo! Also not running yet at top speed. So, just shift my aim over and start engaging this Ryujo. Once again, using Armor Piercing. 
HE is useful against carriers because you can deny them the ability to launch aircraft, that's for sure, but when you have a broadside target, you go for the AP because if you can kill them off faster, then it doesn't matter. If they die quickly, then it won't matter. They're not getting those aircraft off anyways, right? So, you know, sometimes there's a trade-off there, right? Some cases, if they're angled, go HE, but if they're giving you a nice juicy broadside and you have enough penetration to get good penetrating hits or citadel hits, yeah, go AP. You can kill them even before they can get aircraft off sometimes. And so this Ryujo is going to die very, very quickly here and very good. So, well, not eight minutes into the game, enemy team's CVs, both of them are gone. Their entire side on the left-hand side has completely folded. They do have some ships on the right-hand flank. Uh, my division mate in a QE is going to try holding them off, but he's up against the Nelson, and Nelson's just, well, they laugh at QE's bow armor, so... Division mate is probably not going to last all that long. But I'm going to get over here and try my best to offer some assistance and see what I can do with the T-61. That really fast torpedo reload does give you options because you are able to dump torpedoes and get another set off really, really quickly. Right? The follow-up set is, is pretty good for not having boost torpedo reload booster. Alrighty, coming in here, waiting to get into a better position here. I do want to, of course, close the range a little bit, right? Um, the ship does have fantastic concealment, and the only remaining enemy destroyer is a Minsk, which is not going to outspot me at all. And their CVs are dead, so I can risk coming in closer. No radar here either, so definitely going to take this chance here, get some torpedoes off. Led a little bit ahead of the gray line, because... I thought the Nelson wasn't at full speed yet, so decided to lead him a little bit more, thinking that he might accelerate, but it's a Nelson. <laughs> oh, man, had I just aimed at the gray marker, I think I would have been fine. Would have probably nuked that Nelson off the surface of the map, but me being me, sometimes I overthink a little bit what the enemy ship is doing, and well... I could have nuked him, but oh well, I'll, I'll, I'll settle for two torpedo hits in the flood. It's okay. Alrighty, so uh, enemy uh, Bidioni pushing in here. I get spotted, so there goes the smoke for me, and I'm going to open up with my high explosive on the Nelson. Obviously, I'm going to try to get some fires because he had obviously used his damage control to fix the flood. So hopefully, I'm going to get a fire here, and it's going to last. There we go. There's the one fire, and it's going to be a perma fire here. But the Nelson sneakily manages to sneak off and avoid detection. So, okay, turn my attention to the cruisers here. But Dioni decides to go broadside. I decide to switch to AP right away. But, like, what the hell, AP? <laughs> Sometimes the AP just goes full-on dirt mode. I've had moments with the T-61. I don't know why, but it, it just, on occasion, goes full dirt mode. Okay, managed to land myself a torpedo hit onto the Bidioni, getting myself another kill here. And of course, a turn to engage the New Orleans. New Orleans is... Um... Okay. He's just turning towards me, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna try to get good shots in here as he gives more broadside, but... He's just angled enough to bounce me, so... Darn it. Okay, switch over to HE again. And go back to pounding this cruiser with HE. HE's just... Bah. It is German HE after all. It's not the most amazing thing on the planet. Um, get a couple of hits, but okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. Alright. Can't really get myself a kill on that New Orleans. Alright. So turn my attention back to the Nelson, who is nice enough to get spotted again. Obviously start with HE, but then I'm like... Mm. The Nelson seems like it's giving me a broadside. Try AP for a shot, see what happens. Go back to HE again, because he looks like he's starting to get some angling done here. And I'm hoping to set another fire. Gotta pray to RNG for that, because sometimes you can keep shooting and not get any fires, and sometimes you shoot like two salvos and you get like three fires. It RNGs us. Ah, okay. Got a fire. Uh, that's not bad. Alright, fire off my torpedoes and Joe! Okay, god, uh, did not notice the Mahan coming up on my side here. Okay, uh, see, we. we <laughs> one battle, we had a couple of these close calls with torpedoes and destroyers, uh, but amazingly, none of us hit each other. Yeah, 
that's an accomplishment. <laughs> All right, so again, remember what I said earlier, right? If the enemy ship gives you a broadside and you're close enough range, you can go to your armor piercing and you will rack up that damage pretty darn quickly. Nelson, well, he is going to make a mistake. Initially, he had the right idea, stay angled to me, and you can see I'm not doing too, too much damage there with the HE, but I maneuver myself into a broadside position and watch this damage. There's 4,000. There is another like 3,000, so that's 7,000 already. Bam, another 3,000, so that's like 10k almost. There's another hit, and yeah, and there you go. That's, you know, like what? 13, 14 seconds worth of time. Okay, maybe a little bit more than that. But, you know, almost 10k damage. It's really fast. And that's the thing about T61. You have to know when to go from your HE to your AP and AP to your HE, right? And if you can use that correctly, you can really rack up some crazy amounts of damage. Her AP DPM is no joke at all. Alright, so now I'm just pushing up on this New Mexico here. I'm just going to get into a range where I feel like my AP can re-engage him again. Um, it's a little bit angled here. So, I'll see what happens. You know, take a shot with AP, see what happens. Okay, the first one was a little bit hitting the belt, so n nothing much there. Alright, aim a little bit higher, see what happens if I get superstructure hits, and... Ah, there we go. That's like 3,200 damage. Alright, there's another one. 2,400 damage. That's pretty good already. Another salvo there. Almost 2,000 damage. Another salvo there. Yep, 1,190. Oh, it does a bit more at the end there. So another 1,600 damage. Okay, now I'm starting to get a little bit too angled. So, time to switch back to HE. Yep, there you go. See, a lot of those shells are starting to bounce there. So... Still shooting at the superstructure, it can still get you some damage, but eventually you do have to admit that, like, yeah, ship is too angled, so then go ahead, switch back to HE and get fires and get that burning action done. It works. And with your pretty darn good rate of fire, I mean, you're gonna get a lot of shells downrange, and you are gonna set those fires. Yes, they're RNG dependent, you know, but you are gonna get them. Oh, looks like the battleship has turned back around. Gonna have his broadside again, 7.4 kilometers, go back to my armor piercing. And look at that, you know, still pretty consistent damage. So keep going, 2k a salvo, it's good damage now, I mean, especially because the middle section of the ship is already damage saturated, so, you know, getting 2k salvos, it's really, really nice. And that's it, you know, enemy team's pretty much been wiped out, let's take a look at the final results screen. There we go, total damage done, 161,156 on 262 hits, 4 torpedo hits, uh, 7 citadel hits, 3 fires, 3 flooding, Destroy three enemy ships. I had 515,000 credits, 5,708 experience, 286 free experience, a confederate, and a high caliber. So, yeah, pretty decent battle all around. I mean, this is obviously not going to be every battle, but, you know, if you can consistently figure out when to switch ammo for the ship and when to use what, and, of course, how to maximize the use of your torpedoes, you can do very, very well. Uh, base experience, 2,408. That was a pretty darn good battle. And let's take a look at, of course, the actual damage done. And I can show you some pretty interesting statistics there. And here it is. Take a look at that. Armor piercing damage, 82,000. <laughs> 82,000 damage from armor piercing, right? My HE and my fire damage wasn't even at really half of that. Um, torpedo damage, 44,000, right? So that's... The important thing with T61 is know how to use that AP DPM that you have. Top in tier, so find a situation, find an opportunity, use it as much as you can. There we go, credit earned, not too bad, uh, with premium 471,000 net. Without it, would have made about 300k. Anyways, folks, that does it for the review of the T61. Let me know what you think about the ship in the comment section below. Oh, one new piece of news that we heard was that the ship is going to be available for people who spend 25k doubloons um it's some sort of like early access thing um do i think it's worth it to spend 25k doubloons if you already have 25k doubloons sitting around doing nothing and you're using it to buy perma camos for your ships then okay sure you know might as well get a ship early fine but if you're actually spending money to buy 25k doubloons to get the ship then no i would say just 
wait until the ship comes out of the premium store and just wait the extra week. I don't really think it's that big of a deal. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that idea as well from Wargaming um, in the comment section below. So from all that, folks, take care of yourselves. Have yourselves a good one. And I'll talk to all of you again really, really soon.